this morning, I want to give you a quick thought and word because we need the word. Say amen, somebody. Second Samuel chapter 3. Let's go to verse 13. And David said, good, I will make a covenant with you. But one thing I require of you, you will not see my face unless you, unless you first bring Michal, Saul's daughter, when you come to see my face. And so go down to verse 15. And Ishaboth sent and took her from her husband, from uh, Fatiel, the son of Ladish. Then her husband went along with her to Baharim, weeping behind her. So Abner said to him, go return, and he returned. I uh, want to take this Old Testament story because I believe it's especially relevant to what is about to happen in this water baptism service in just a moment. But just to recap the story, Saul, King Saul was extremely jealous of David because of the victories God gave him, especially when he defeated Goliath and the people began to sing a greater song about David than they did Saul. Jealousy overcame him. You remember the story. And for killing uh, Goliath, one of the rewards was that David got to marry the daughter of the king, Michal. He was given her to marry, and that was his reward. And Saul became so jealous, he drove David away. And not only did he bust up the marriage with his daughter and David, but he gave that daughter to another man. And she lived with that man by force, we are not told any details, but she had to marry and go to that man and live with him after being the, the wife of David. And she loved David. She was the one who saved his life. You remember she opened the window and he slid out when assassins were coming to kill him. Uh, she loved David. And now imagine how she's taken and for approximately, they believe, about 10 years she lives with this man. And I'm sure even if it's a Stockholm syndrome where you just kind of, because you've been held captive so long by someone, you, 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 you have affections. It may have been that she really fell in love with this guy. We don't know. We know one thing for sure. He sure fell in love with her. That's very clear in the scripture. Now let me, let me go quickly where I want to go. His name was uh, Patiel, Patiel, and he was her new husband. Okay, so fast forward, King Saul dies in battle, and his sons are killed, and David now is be about to become king, and Abner comes to him, and he says, I'm the one who's a political person in the nation. I can unite all the tribes behind you, and you can be king this time tomorrow. And David looked at him, and that's where we picked up the text, and he said, Okay, we'll make a covenant. I'm going to be king, and you're going to help me, and you're going to assist me, but I've got one thing that will not happen. I will not begin to rule and reign until I see my bride face to face. You read it. He, sa he said, until I see her face to face, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to set up my kingdom and rule and reign. What a beautiful picture of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I'm coming back and I'm going to rule and reign and straighten out this whole messed up world, but it's not going to happen until the trumpet sounds and I see my bride, the church, face to face. And he said, I want my lawful wife. She's mine. She doesn't belong to that man. She belongs to me. So he said, so go get her and bring her to me and then I'll set up the kingdom and we'll rule and reign. And Abner says, let's go. He goes, he goes to the house where the, he was a farmer, where the man was, and he had soldiers, and he had a horse, a couple horses, and he said, you and the, and the servant 
Miss Michal, Saul's daughter, you come with me. David has called for you. And at that moment, the Bible said that she got on the horse with her servant and with Abner and the soldiers, and they started leaving. And somewhere in the picture comes this man, Pathiel. He comes stepping out, and the Bible said that he begins to follow behind. He loves her. He's emotionally connected to her, and he's wailing, he's weeping, he's pleading, he's begging his case, trying his best to move the heart of Mikhail, and he's saying, no, no, come back to me. Come back to me. You know we had some times. Look, we had some great times. Come back to me. And she had to make a decision. She had to decide what she was going to do, but it wasn't just that he said it, but if you read the whole story, he followed them. He followed them for two and a half days. I want you to understand that you have to say, I will or I will not follow Jesus. She had to decide, her own free will had to decide. And really what I'm preaching on is how to say goodbye to your past. Because there are emotion, there's an emotional price that has to be paid. Emotions you have to wade through. Even in the church, when you make up your mind, as for me and my house, we will follow the Lord, and you take off down the road to get with your King of kings and your Lord of lords, Jesus, you're ready to rule and reign with him. There will be a pathial spirit that follows you behind and says, no, don't leave me. It may, it may come in the form of an addiction. It may come in the form of a, a person it may, you know, that just drives you back to that old lifestyle. It may come in the form of a text. It may come in the form of a Facebook friend. But somebody, some, some pathial will, will show up in your life just when you're trying to straighten out and get away, and it'll scream at you, no, don't leave me, don't leave me. We're going to drown him today. We're going to drown him today. Isn't it amazing the things that come crawling out of the woods when you make up your mind, I'm going to follow Jesus. And when she had seen David before, she remembered how much she loved him. And now she's about to see him again. And something in her said, keep walking, keep going. Why? Why Abner allowed this guy to go on and on and on for hour after hour after hour, day after day, we're not told why, except I believe he was saying and King David was saying, I want to know what's in her heart. Does she really love me or is she going to turn back to those old emotions and lies and feelings of the past, will she really let the past go and move forward because there's a king and a kingdom awaiting you, a destiny, a plan. God has ordered steps. It's all ahead of you. But you have to make up your mind, no, I'm not coming back to you. I'm done. This is it. This water is my grave. She kicks the horse. And something magical about two and a half days. But she kicks the horse. And when she starts moving this time, something shifts in Abner. And he says, I've had enough of this. And he goes back and he says, Mr. Uh, Pathiel, it's time for you to go home and leave her alone, shut up, go away, she's free, she's delivered, she's on her way to victory, she's on her way to serve her king, and you're going to have to go back where you came from. Somebody clap your hands if you know that there is a free moment that when the sun sets you free, you're free indeed. The battle's over. You may have other battles, but that battle is over.
I'm not going back to him, her, that, it, this, that. I'm done. How many of you are free this morning? Can we take a pause break, a praise break? Would you stand to your feet all over this room? And would you give God praise if you know he sets free? And whom he sets free is free indeed. Come on, praise him. Praise him. I said really praise him at every campus. You don't have to go back. You don't have to go back. What's your name? Jacob Smith. How long have you been coming to the church? About three years now. Did somebody invite you? What made you show up? The Jericho House. Jericho House, a rehab program. Are you presently in it? Uh, yes, sir. I just graduated the SLT program. Congratulations. We're proud of you. What was your struggle? Uh, my struggle was really anything. Uh, alcohol, heroin, meth, more. Um, suicide, suicidal thoughts, depression, anxiety, uh, panic attacks, mental health. Uh, you go on with that list. How far did it take you? What was, what was life like at the bottom of all of that? At the bottom, I had a gun in my mouth, um, crying out to God to save me. Um, and he, he radically did. Where was that at? Was it at your home? Was it in your... It was in Parker, Florida. Uh, I was homeless and strung out bad back in 2019 and uh, hit my rock bottom down there doing just living outside just living where, where would you sleep just on job sites uh, different places uh, in the back of my boss's truck um, so many different places and and you just had had reached a, a point where you just couldn't kick it you couldn't get free from it you couldn't find peace you couldn't find hope the enemy whispers, what's the use of going on? Where'd you find a gun? I had purchased it from one of my dealers, and um, I had had it secretly, didn't tell anybody about it. My parents and my family didn't even know what I was doing in Florida. I just um, I lived a life in secrecy, and because uh, I was ashamed of myself. And so what happened? So I cried out to God for help, and not only did he help me, he led me to call my mom and tell, him what was good, tell her what was going on. She contacted one of her friends that was in Georgia. He came all the way from Georgia to come pick me up uh, from Parker, Florida. Drove me all the way back to Georgia. <laughs> and um, never even met the guy. So three, three days later, on October the 16th, 2019, I was uh, at the Jericho house. And God radically changed my life through that. It's a wonderful ministry. Larry, who came up in the church, Larry, I remember when he started that, he came up in this church and, and had the dream to start Jericho House, and we support it monthly and are proud to do it and thankful to do it. And So this is a big day for you. Do you have friends and family here today? What's going on in your life now? What's happening? Are you still living in the back of a truck? No, sir. Um, I'm still staying with the Jericho house and helping serve that uh, as staff and just <laughs> plugging in wherever I can. Only God could take all of that and turn it into a ministry. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and what is your name? My name is Erisbeth Villaforte. And how did you end up at Free Chapel? Um, well, um, growing up, um, I didn't really, um, my parents weren't really religious or didn't really show me church. So I really had to look for it on my own. So when I was a teenager, um, I got diagnosed with juvenile arthritis and um, I got into, well, I got depressed. I had anxiety because it's a lot every day to be in pain, you know, kind of dealing with that, kind of dealing with being a teenager. And um, so I started self-medicating with uh, alcohol at a very young age. And um, I had a DUI when I was 23 years old. And um, when I was 24, I had my daughter. Um, I was raising her by myself. 
and um, I, I needed a strength. I felt like I was alone. I felt like um, nobody was there. I, I just felt like, how am I going to do this? I have nobody, and she's looking up to me. How am I going to do this? So I started coming here, and um, I remember I came up to the stage, and just so many people came up to me, started praying with me. They laid their hands over me, and I just, it felt just, I don't know, like just such an awakening. I'm not really an emotional person, but it was just like that time I just, you know, I just started crying and my, I had my daughter in my hands and they were like, you know, you, you, you got this, you know, you're strong, you, you're gonna get through this. And um, eventually through God, I have, you know, I felt like I have become a very strong woman, um, a very strong mom that they can look up to. very powerful that's so your whole deal was i want to be a better mother i got to be a good mother to my baby and it made you come to this church and that touched me when you said when you came down that people surrounded you and it brought a strength to you it brought change it brought a, 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 a really what they were doing was trying to facilitate god's presence in your life and that's what that touch on the shoulder is God touch her, God help her, God reveal yourself to her, and it worked. Yeah, um, I don't know. I just, I just feel like a different person. I know that's cliche, but um, there's a power here and in Christ that I could not find anywhere. Not through family, not through myself. It's just like you can't go through life alone, especially in the times. Today, it's just, it's too hard. There's a lot of negativity that, you know, you just need somebody there and God is that strength, he's that anchor. Boy, I really feel the presence of the Lord when you talk because his heart felt what you're saying. You've been born again. That's what happened to you. You slipped, you got around the river and slipped into it. And now you are starting a first generation Christian family through the grace of Jesus Christ. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. We gotta, talk, we gotta stop and praise the Lord right there. Give Him all the glory. Give Him all the honor. Hello, sir. What's your name? Uh, Kelly Kirksey. Kelly, we're glad to have you here today. Um, how did you, how long have you been at the church? I started watching online during the pandemic, and I've been, when the doors opened back up, my wife and I uh, decided to come here. So you had never really came, and then you started watching during the pandemic online, and uh, what made you watch us? Well, I mean, I'd been in church, but, um, you know, the four years prior to this, I was empty and as broken as a man could be, and, uh, and November 13th, 2018, I made that choice. Um, no more drugs, alcohol. I was addicted to drugs and alcohol. And uh, I made a choice. And when I made that choice, um, made that step, God just took over and, and changed my life. To, um, so so how, how, long were, how long were you bound? And I mean, it, when it really got a hold of you. And I tell people this a lot. I, I remember this for some reason a lot. But I watched a documentary one time about poisonous snakes, dangerous snakes, and the guy was a professional. And he said, the danger in picking up this snake, the greatest danger is when you're trying to put it down. Wow. I never forgot that, that he said, he said sometimes it's, it's almost every time it's easier to pick it up than it, it's when you set it down that it's more prone to strike. And you, and you don't know how much the enemy is destroying your life till you try to put it down. And when you try to put it down, every demon in hell would tell you, you can't put it down. You, this is who you are. You're a slave to this the rest of your life. Did you hear that voice? Every day. Every day. And... When I made that choice, um, I just surrendered. I surrendered to Christ, and he took those demons away. 
Where was it? Was it in? Was it at your home, or was it in an altar, or was it a special, or was it a process? To uh, no longer bound. Um, yeah, and yeah, and it was. You got in that program, and it changed my life. It was. Um, I got still, and I found God there. And I, I'd, I'd been in church. I knew, I knew who Christ was, but I was so far away. I didn't. I didn't know how to get back. As far as the addiction part, the the the, the, the grip. I mean, you get saved, your spirit's saved. But then comes the battle with the, with the body and the, and the habits and, and all of that. Just the, that voice saying, come back to me, come back to me. And he's taking that from me. I don't, I don't have that taste in my mouth no longer. Not a bit. So was it, was it instant or was it a, a process? It was a process, no doubt. It was a process. It was a year-long process. Is there a point where you felt like I just you just made up your mind that you were never going back to that life again? I made a choice. I said, no more. Different man, aren't you? For sure. You have kids? I do. I have five kids. They got a new daddy, didn't they? Yeah, for sure. I got a beautiful wife. God restored my life to, if you could have let me pick what, where I wanted to be, it's, it's a hundredfold better. To God be the glory. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. You deserve the glory, Lord. You change lives. You change families. You change marriages. You change destinies. And we praise you and we honor you and we glorify you today. To God be the glory. You're invited to join us in person at Free Chapel across our eight campuses on the East and West Coast. You can enjoy the same great experience with spirit-filled worship and a powerful Jesus-centered message from our senior pastor, Jensen Franklin. Kids and youth of all ages will experience and learn about the love of Jesus. From Kid Pack on Sunday mornings to our annual Forward Conference that draws thousands of students from across the country. No matter your age or background, there's a place for you at Free Chapel. Join us every Sunday online or in person at a campus near you. Of what are the lessons? Mm. What are the lessons that we can avoid? Yeah, a, a great quote, um, mentors are shortcuts to success. Mentorship is learning through the pain of another person. There are two ways that people learn through mentors or mistakes. <laughs> And I'd rather learn through somebody who made the mistake and I can learn through their pain than me make the mistake and go through that hell. Mentoring Moments with Jensen Franklin and Marcus Meekum. Now available wherever you get your podcasts. This program has been sponsored in part by friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries. We hope you've enjoyed this teaching by Jensen Franklin. For more information about this message and other ministry resources, visit us online at jensenfranklin.tv.